We were up at the third floor nurses station and we were running a, an EVP session. We were both leaning against the nurses station counter just chatting and there was a ball, one of the golf balls sitting on the counter, suddenly just bounced to the lower desk and to the floor. Every place has their evil, has their bad, every place has their good. Hilvey Manor is an 80-20. 80% 80 good, 20% bad. And she stuck her head in the room and she heard a voice, a male voice in her face. And at the same time, I saw like a head and shoulders and um, like little yellow eyes. It was freezing, freezing cold in the hallway. We went past the bathrooms and we could hear laughing and footsteps like boots on the floors above us when no one was there. I guess every story starts back at the beginning. So we're here in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Before I began this adventure five years ago, this building was my first taste of real investigating. Here, there was everything a novice ghost hunter could ever want. Countless deaths, shadow people, and disembodied voices coming straight out of its darkest depths. A lot of time has passed since then, so let's see what's changed. Welcome to Hillview Manor. Campbell, it's cryptic shit. I can't make sense of it and I can't see who it's coming from. I see your heart's desires, but all I see are actually things that you want. I don't know who it's coming from and I don't know who would know that. Holy God. Maybe if I just run. Food. Food. Wow. <laughs> and this is partially only because Chris called me out and told me that I wouldn't I would never move, so. I closed the gateways of the West as I close this circle. I gave up everything to walk down this road. Myth, danger, adrenaline. I've learned a lot along the way, and I've adapted my methods accordingly. For one, I wasn't sure how I felt about psychics, but I've tested them. I can say at least the ones I've worked with are legit. I never dreamed I would own an infirmary, but I do. This entire journey has made me undeniably passionate about saving our past. My friends and I use unconventional methods to find the truth within every legend and to capture the voices of spirits. Oh, that's a human tone voice. You may have heard my name, it's Adam, and I invite you to travel with me as we find and call the resident undead. Hillview Manor. In order to better care for the county's mentally ill, impoverished and elderly, this 63,000 square foot behemoth was constructed in 1925. Hailing under its first name, the Lawrence County Home for the Aged, it sits on 15 acres that perfectly complement its incredible feat of architecture. Here in Newcastle, Pennsylvania, would be the county's first attempt to modernize personal care. Perry D. Snyder, a man who was first elected years earlier as superintendent of the Newcastle City Home, was now being assigned the job of managing this new facility. Assisting him would be his wife, Mary, who would personally oversee all of the female inmates. Officially opening its doors on October 19, 1926, the facility would begin its operation with about a dozen staff members and 20 inmates who were transferred from the former county home containing multiple recreational areas, several residential wings, and a giant cafeteria. It was certainly cutting age of its time. For the next 18 years, the Snyders ran the facility to the best of their abilities. But in 1944, their management would come under fire during an extremely heated public hearing that was investigating claims of incompetency. An inmate by the name of Eli Sari, who was found dead in the boiler room, was one of the problems facing the Snyders' reign. 
His death was believed to have been caused by alcohol poisoning, but speculations arose due to how his fellow employees handled the night of his death. Another thorn in Mr. Snyder's side was a handful of suicides under his watch. One individual took his life by hanging himself on a bathroom door, while a few others had met their end by jumping off the roof. With these kind of stories emerging around the Lawrence County home for the aged, it would be hard to build a solid defense. In the wake of this hearing, the Snyders were now basically retired with pensions and were still allowed to stay at the home, but with new reduced roles. The Snyder's reign over the Lawrence County home would come to an end in August of 1944, with Mr. Snyder sick in bed for days and his faithful wife by his side tending to all of his needs. They were given three weeks to vacate the building. In 1974, major remodeling would occur and after a contest to find a more suitable name for the antiquated sounding Lawrence County home for the aged, it would be renamed to what we know today, Hillview Manor. For the next 29 years, the facility gave care to countless elderly, and from those three decades alone, some notable residents became quite famous for their stay here. From Mary Virginia, an elderly woman who developed quite a fondness for dolls and trinkets, to a man by the name of Jimmy Snaps, who would charge a dollar to take your photo even though he had no film in his camera. But one of the most interesting stories is that of a possible haunting that may have occurred in its final years of operation. Although there is no solid documentation of these events, word of mouth spread among workers hearing the elderly talk about seeing a very young boy who went by the name Jeffrey. Said to be wearing 1920s attire and always having a baseball in hand, those of the staff who cared to listen knew that this boy didn't seem to fit our time period. Another problem with the story was that no children were living in the building at this time. The mystery only began to deepen when the staff began to notice that every elderly person who saw Jeffrey would end up dying days or even weeks later. A lot of people choose our world, but Elfie was born into an occult tradition. An old friend of Becca's who, for many years, lived a very public life as a witch. She's very versed in energy work, spiritualism, and stands on a firm paranormal foundation. For tonight's investigation, she'll hold two rituals in order to restructure the energy of the entire location. Since we believe there is an entourage of spirits following us, these rituals will help empower the local spirits instead of those attached to us. To assist in her workings, you'll occasionally see her husband, Chris. Right now, all of us are set up in the eagle's nest, one floor above the main entrance, watching a live feed of Elfie as she performs her first offering ritual in the basement of Hillview Manor. Kind of. So we are starting this off right now, no hesitation. We just hit the ground. Elfie and Chris are now down in the basement. And Becca, why don't you quickly explain to everyone what they are about to do or in the process of doing? I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> <laughs> With that, watch closely. I mean, it's magic. Elfie does a kind of magic that I'm not really familiar with, and she's a lot more structured in a lot of the things that she does. She's gonna call, I think she's gonna call the corners. I light this candle in the north, with the gates in the north open as I cast a circle to call upon the spirits. Come forth, no malicious spirits are without dead may come. And what does that mean to call the corners? To call. Call, call upon the power of the north, south, east, and west. I light this candle in the sun. This would make sense. I see what you're in the corners. We've got one corner. Yep. She's going to set up another one. I can tell you is my head is buzzing with a nice even energy that does not happen when I do magic. Mine's chaotic, it's fast, it's furious, it is not grounded. <laughs> In its easiest form, this is an offering. Um, she's giving an offering to the spirits. Before we open space, to speak to the spirits who dwell within these walls and hope that they bring messages to us and we bring them some peace. We offer you food and sustenance for we know that energy must be 
expanded in order for you to communicate with us. So please accept a small token of sustenance and energy from us so that you may speak and it does not weaken you. It's so organized, it's so ritualistic. If you could see what happens on an, on an energy level, it's enter that's how. That's my next thing. What, are you picking up anything? Have they gotten the attention of anybody? Are they, yeah. are the dead, are there no dead in here right now? Are they watching from afar? Are they within the circle? They're not in the circle now, they're watching from outside of the circle. I like this candle that I've charged the new moon. I really love this, the level of respect that Elfie brings to the picture. Mm -hmm. She has this profound respect for the dead. I know, I love this when you involve yourself with new people. Like, this is a technique I have never seen before. Yeah. I don't even know what it's going to do tonight. I... I have to reach harder, though, through this magic, for whatever reason, to see things. Granted, I'm a little off my game mm -hmm. today, but... Elfie selected the basement for her ritual because of all the remaining belongings that are still here from past residents. It's been known for quite a while and widely believed that spirits can attach to items. And since these remaining things were some of their last possessions, this area could easily be the epicenter for local spirit activity. Now with her offering in place and all of the corners of the building called, we'd regroup with her on One North. All right, we just picked up Elfie and Chris from the basement after she did her offering. But what we're going to do really quick is an experiment that only Elfie and I talked about prior to this. Now, Chris, uh, you'll be there to also help and energize this even more. We're going to explain that as we go. But real quick, we're going to bring someone in as a special guest to help during this. We're going to bring in uh, Marka Ryan. She helped us at the Gill House. Oh, OK. Well, I can whisper. I'm very sorry. I don't want to wake the baby. Hello? Hey, Marker, we're down in One North. Can you meet us real quick? Yeah, I'll be right there. All right, see you in a second. Marka! Hello! Hey, thanks for sticking around a little longer. No problem. But the best part's coming. So, are you, you're familiar with Elfie, right? Yes. I told you she'd be joining us tonight. This yes. is her husband, Chris. Somewhere in this building, we are going to be conducting an experiment, and you're going to be a part of it. Of course. That's all you know. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Maybe. That's best to be. Let's go. Weeks prior to this investigation, Elfie and I talked about conducting an experiment with her energy work. The idea is simple. Have two locations marked for quarantines, and then have her do energy work in only one. Would the energy being reconstructed so precisely in that area have an effect on the activity? And more importantly, would it affect the individual in its given space? Knowing that both Ashley and Marka tend to be scared when isolated. Holy f This gives us a good baseline of their natural behavior. So now knowing this, Ashley will be quarantined in the cafeteria and Marka in two east. As an added bonus, Rebecca has absolutely no idea about this experiment. And after 20 minutes are up, we'll see if she can pick up on which room Elfie reconstructed. All right, starting on Pandora's. This is Ashley's quarantine, starting Pandora's. Okay, <clears throat> good luck. Oh, thank you. Luck. Bye, thanks. Holy f Pandora's are live, reporting. Yeah, they're live. Yeah, they're live. Yeah, they're live. All right, Mark, okay. Bye. Bye. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah, Mark is really calm. Now again, Elfie, I'm just going to break it down again. What exactly have you done to one of these rooms? Basically, I <clears throat> set a circle and set the space where I open up where the spirits are in the building. I very much specified, does the spirits in the building don't want anyone wandering in from outside okay, to uh, come and try to communicate and bring messages here. or make contact in some way. I try to also very much specify nothing malicious or ill intent to, because you don't know who comes in. Um, but essentially just opening that space up and putting energy in to feed in so that they have something to work off of to communicate with. Hey, I'm assuming we're good to go. So 
can see my breath. Just seen a light. I'm not sure if that was from a car. Exactly. We're going to see if either of them react differently. Now, we know they're both scared shitless all the time. I know, exactly. But we're going to see if either maybe one becomes more calm, more scared than usual. Mm -hmm. This place is f***ing huge. Um, was this ever used for anything else other than a cafeteria? I'm literally sweating so bad right now. I don't know how this happens every time. Like, it is cold as f in this building, and I'm sweating bullets. Like, Look at this, yeah, one's freezing, <laughs> one's getting hotter. <laughs> she, she keeps looking behind her book bag. Yeah. When I was down there with her, she said she was scared to death before it even started. She keeps looking at a man. I don't know if I want to go Are you back there? I feel like this is the part where I'm supposed to move around. <laughs> I don't wanna. All right, let's, I'm, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try to move um, more than one foot away from where I'm at now. I just can't see. I don't know how you guys do this. Um, okay, that's a wall. Let's move over. This is kind of creepy. I don't, I don't know if I wanna go over there. We have seen both of these girls in their quarantines. Both have been scared shitless more than most. Actually, we, we had Mark at the Gill House. Mark, exactly, is so calm and yeah, relaxed. She she's actually, all over the place. Actually, exactly, she's all over, she's bouncing everywhere. I have this weird, like, desire to go over there, and I think it's just because I want to face my fears, but I, like, my body is not, oh, maybe if I just run. I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. Normally it's not a bonus. We can usually communicate with them. Okay. We can back will normally say what they're around. Uh, but like I said, this experiment, it's we're not front loading them. We're not giving them information to kind of say, oh, yeah, make them think that they are in that spot. Yeah. And that's what I found interesting with the experiment because too often when you go into a location you know it's haunted, you're already predisposed to what to expect. Mm -hmm. Especially going into a hospital, you have got images in your head, so. This is interesting, doing something to the environment, but not telling anyone so it's not predisposed. Oh, I keep hearing little things, but I, I'm trying to... I want to pretend like it's my imagination. Um, I'm just going crazy, so... <clears throat> doing it. Oh, this is really creepy. Ew. And this is partially only because Chris called me out and told me that I wouldn't, I would never move, so. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> you just got called out, Chris. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going back to the side. F that shit. Oh, all right. I don't like over there. Whatever is in that room over there, I don't like. Mm. All right. Can you say goodbye? What we will do is we will tell everyone here which room, uh, since we're coming to the end here. So if you can go ahead and tell us now. Or, right, Beck, do you want to take a shot real quick? No, I don't know. On any vibes or anything, if you had to take a guess or even on vibes, which this, room? This room seems more structured on a more energetic level to me than this one. But she's calmer, so if I'm going to go in front of my brain, it's like, she's calmer, so I don't understand what that is. 
You said that this area feels more structured versus where where Mark is. Yeah. Okay, but you're saying that she's more calm, so you think it could be something to that. I can't think about it. Elfie that. did Ashley's area. Yes! So, yes. we can also yes. that. Yay! When you said it to me, more structured, you know. Obviously, Elfie, right? That would be something. Yeah. You're setting something in the place, you're structuring this. Mm -hmm. Nice. I really hate not knowing what the f is going on. But I, I love you all, but this sucks. Oh my god, I don't know if, like, there's something really nice that wants to talk to me, or if it's the devil following again. Like, holy shit. Whew. Okay, feeling a little bit better. Every time. I don't know what is over there. Given that Elfie reconstructed the energy in the cafeteria specifically for Ashley's quarantine, we were curious to see what results we'd yield in the same energy using the spirit box. So without delay, we'd head right back up to experiment. We're gonna head upstairs to do a spirit box session. We're gonna make our way up, all right? So, so back to the cafeteria. Ashley, you're familiar with this. Oh, yeah, I've seen it once before. Once before? Yeah. So, I'm going to do this on reverse. Whatever you want. Yeah, 200. We had good luck with an RCI. All right, somebody come forward. Can you tell us your name, please? Can you say Elfie Music? Elfie. Elfie. spirit box session in the cafeteria, we'd make our way up to the nurse's station on three to set Chris up for his quarantine. Hello? Chris is quarantined. Chris is quarantined. Pandora's are running. All right, buddy, you got 20 minutes, man. All right, bro. Cool. Good luck. Yeah. When I first was setting him up there, he said a door, he heard a door creaking as it was opening. I was waiting a minute ago, and I heard somebody in the other room, actually over in this corner, they were squeaking a door open and close. I need you to do that again for me if you could, please. Go ahead and tell him, see if we can get some interaction from that kid. Would you like to tell him? Just yeah, that's fine. Who's here today over there? Who's camera? Hey, Chris. Yes? You got a child by you with uh, muddy feet, kind of walking around, younger child, boy. Just gonna give you a heads up. Hey, buddy. Here's this little boy up here. If you want to come over here, I got a toy for you. It's a little toy truck. Can you come over here and tell me your name? And grab that. 
So we'll grab that. Holy God. For the record, I swear to God, I just seen a white mist. It would look like a white mist float about high as that nurse's station and just go right by it. I kid you not. Children can be really <laughs> Yeah, there was a, there's actually a child. You seem to have his attention. Uh, it was there was a child there, and it was running in the direction you were at. He just came on really quick, but he's been he's been around you for the last few minutes. Okay. Hey, little guy. Are you aware that one of my good friends gave you an offering of food today? You know that. say you think it would interact with them better I don't know if you can give us like a hallway shot or They're something hungry I'm hungry he had food it's kind of relevant to what we were doing with the healthy little dragon the one that is around you or the few that are around you are hungry is what's relevant that Becca's picking on you think they're from the graves outside I'm not, not sure yes the graves look too big to be kids graves yeah Okay, so you're gonna do this offer. Okay, so with this very simple uh, food we'll be offering to them, and it's just kind of a a way, hopefully, to let them understand that we're here in peace, that we're here just to work with them, to hopefully get messages and show them that we mean no disrespect, and hopefully it gives them sustenance and helps them move forward. Spirit. Let me offer you this food, Ness, for hopes that tonight you will communicate with us and give you this energy so that you may move forward if you still remain here and that you'll be happy. Hopefully they will enjoy it. I heard a voice right after that. I'm not sure if it was come from base, but it sounded female. That's not us. I didn't think so. All right, listen up. I guess that I've been having something follow me from location to location that hasn't been nice. Oh, so sinister. Oh, Lord. Did you call me here today? Well, I can't get in because I'll be kicked him out. <laughs> No, he can't get in. Elfie, Elfie kicked him out. <laughs> Thank you, Elfie. <laughs> Come closer to me. Make your presence known. Knock that golf ball off the table. You're too weak, aren't you? Man's voice. You haven't lived the life I have. I'm sorry for that. You're right, I haven't. Oh, my heart. I'm ready to cry. For the record, I don't think this has ever happened, but one of the Pandoras has shut off. Who just shut this Pandora off?
died, but I mean, yeah, I in five years, years, I've never had any of those ever shut off while we do this. Shit, that means all the data's lost. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Hey, Chris, Yo. I'm going to come up and get you because one, one Pandora is down. We've lost everything on that Pandora. So I'm just, we're going to shut it down here so we at least salvage the one Pandora. Okay? All right, buddy. After regrouping with Chris, we'd get ready for our first ripple in time. This is a strategy we use in order to simulate the dead for maximum interaction. We believe that if you introduce something from their past, they're much more likely to interact with you. Answer me! Were you in the house looking for runaways? The controversy surrounding the death of Eli Sari has always fascinated me. And tonight I want to put it to the test. Allegedly he died of alcohol poisoning and hypothermia, but I've always had a hard time believing that story. So for this, we're going to hold a poker game and Eli is going to start a fight over alcohol. Normally, when we reconstruct the past, Becca sits in and draws what she sees interacting with us. But for this, she'll be sitting back at base so we can get Elfie's input. So with 20 minutes on the clock and two Pandoras running, let's see if this story makes more sense. Give this to me. We're going to go. gentlemen, no. My whiskey. All right, so. You got Pandoras? I got Pandoras. Chris has had something following him. Yeah. And I don't see it tonight which may be a side effect if you kick him some ass. He's had it. I've, last four times I've seen him. Might be hanging back, maybe. Probably frighten you. Oh, You're please. Bad ass. <laughs> Good? Oh, the recorders are going to fly when we do this. Okay, I could, I could dump the table table towards them. Yeah, Mark, the recorders are on here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pretty good hand, right off the bat. <laughs> We're not climbing nickels and dimes here. Come on, put some money down. I know, in theater, people actually freeze. They're waiting for the Pandoras to see if they can catch an EVP. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is what you don't see. <laughs> they, they will, like, do all their actions and they'll pause, give stuff or, or chance to make a comment. Oh, okay. And then they'll go back into the action and then they'll pause to see if it reacted to something they said. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's a cool idea. It's, it's really boring to watch if they do a lot. <laughs> yeah, but no, it, I like the idea because it's like you you don't know what the time frame is so you don't know how fast a reaction you'll get out of the spirit so like a moment for us could be who knows how many for the spirit so they might need a little catching up to react exactly. so no i like that idea eli share the damn bottle we bought this together jeez hey no. pass that around all right I thought in my head and now 
with this one right now. <laughs> Abigail! Abigail! Money card. What's Hello, up? Gentlemen. How are you? Good, what do we have here? Can I have a seat? Hey, Abigail. Hey, honey. But, okay, now I remember what I was about to think. The other theory could be too is that the reason why maybe people thought that the child was um, ushering people to the other side or a sign of intending death could be does that the person was already getting close to death and that might have been why it was easier for them to interact with the spirit who is already on the other side if they're getting close to the other side. You son of a See, this is the type of thing that would interest me is trying out ripple effect like this. You want to be in it? Oh, yeah, totally. All right. I, I, I like doing this kind of stuff, so like reenacting and everything. Yeah. Totally down my alley. Oh, you're into the next one. There's not another one tonight, but next time we have one. Sounds good to me. I'll bring my clothes. You have like the best costume. <laughs> I'm tired of this shit. You, know, you son of a bitch. Something showed up? I think it's a male. Kind of came back. Nothing really seems like it's jumping out. Is so it like assessing what's going on or something? Yeah, I'm just kind of watching. guy at the very end of the ripple that started to step forward that was interested but just kind of watched yeah no details on any of it oh after they flipped the table that's right you got attention from that but i don't have any like okay. anything i can pinpoint what we're going to do quickly as always we're going to do an active evp and lp have you ever heard an active evp before like this do you do a quick evp session any playback see if you get any answers exactly okay so here's what we're going to do we're going to do it right here real quick all right, if there's anyone here, we would just like to speak to you in real time, real quick. Can you please come forward and speak to us? You can talk right into this box here. NDVP, ending. All right, Ash, I'm going to play this back into yours. 
Let's see what we caught. Just please come forward and speak to us. You can talk right into this box here. I heard hey right in the beginning too. Hey. <laughs> me at the end, the word yeah, me. Yeah, there's something at the end. Yes. All right, what we're going to do, we're going to waste no time. Uh, I'm going to head down to the chapel and do my quarantine right down there. When I first came here, it was one of the, the biggest places I went to. We had a ton of people there, caught a lot of stuff. I'd like to do it by myself. So we'll put that on for 20 minutes, okay? <laughs> I selected the chapel because it was there that I had some of my first real paranormal experiences back in 2010. In some sense, coming back here after all these years is like a rite of passage. So for the next 20 minutes, I guess I'll be put to the test. Five long years. What is it that I want? Starting Pandora's. Starting Pandora's. Come on. Rock this shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this shit. My name's Adam. I was here five years ago, and the reason I picked the chapel was because when I was here the first time, this is one of the first places we went, and we had a lot of really interesting activity from you. If you are still here, can you talk to me? If you are still here, can you talk to me? It's not a ghost that belongs in Hillview. That definitely walked in with somebody. I assure you, if you try to speak, we will hear you. We've been hearing your voices all night. All you gotta do is speak towards the boxes I have on the ground here. You've seen these devices before. It's been used here before. Go ahead and speak into those, please. Is everybody back up at base? Yes. Yes. Okay. I thought I heard footsteps outside. <laughs> so guess what Becca just saw? What did she see? A cat. <laughs> yes. We're going big here today. <laughs> Tell him I heard the word home too. <laughs> she, she, she also heard, heard the word home. And there's a lot of energy around. At home. Doesn't know who it came from. That's all she heard. There's a lot of energy around you. You're welcome. Is it an energy around me specifically, or is it an energy because of this room and the worshiping? Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Checking Pandora real quick. A Pandora has died again. Died or off? Did it die or is it off? Something, I'm getting an error. Oh, sorry, that's the, uh, I have the phone speaker up onto it. That is creepy. I don't I'll like it. Yeah. It's getting real weird down here. I can feel something stirring up. Obviously, it's messing with the electronics. I just feel, uh, it's, it's feeling a little charged. Ears are starting to pop. What? So the pressure is changing? Man, I swear someone's outside these barrier doors. I just saw a shadow run by the front here. Listen, you can come inside. You can come inside. I'm seeing it down here. I don't know, Becca, if you can see anybody, but I definitely saw a shadow block out. I could see the light blocked. I wish I could see who's talking. 
cryptic shit. Kimmel, it's cryptic shit. I can't make sense of it and I can't see who it's coming from. I see your heart's desires, but all I see are actually things that you want. I don't know who it's coming from and I don't know who would know that. You think you know what I want. All right, you've got my attention. Five long years. What is it that I want? What is it that I want? All right, so this is weird. It's just cryptic. I don't understand. I actually am seeing things come out of your head. I'm seeing stuff that I won't articulate, but they are things that you care about and that you want deeply. And I see Chris on a table screaming, symbolizing Resident Undead, not like you want him. Someone's in my mind? I, I, I mean, I don't know. Spirits can communicate telepathically, so it might really just be somebody speaking to you deeply. You say you know my desires. Can you identify yourself, please? Could this have something to do with what Elfie gave? Probably not, right? We're, we're, we're speechless. We don't know what this is. It doesn't seem relevant, and there's probably... It's not from here, probably? Maybe? It could be from here. I mean, maybe trying to understand him. Oh, that's a good point. Elfie has a good point. Maybe it's trying to understand you. Like who you are, and why you're here, and what your intentions are. It makes sense, and the energy's been structured here differently. This is the first time we've had an intelligent spirit come up and directly say things like this. This is really different. So I do apologize. I am trying to wrap my head around it. I need to know where you came from, because I assure you my request would not be given in a chapel, no offense, but I don't know if you are outside of this, if you are from here. Are you tied to this location? It's like he doesn't want to leave, but he knows he has to. Are you ready for us to come get you? Yeah, I just want to say I'm feeling like jolts going down the back of my neck. All right, we'll see you soon. Okay, bye. What I wanted to ask, Chris, you with us? You got a camera? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, the audio was really bad in there. But um, if you can help me understand a little bit more, because the audio, I, I was like, I could hear you, but. I don't know that I can articulate it. Well, if you had a good point, because I just kept seeing your mind, things coming out of your mind. But it is possible that somebody was trying to connect with you and understand you, right? Yeah, it seemed like, like, tried to. Uh, sorry, get to know you better. Under, like, just think deeper, like, what your true intentions are. Unfortunately, right after this, management fell ill and asked us to leave the property. This cut our investigation significantly shorter than anticipated, and because of that, we were unable to experiment further with Elfie. As we packed up our equipment, Elfie and Chris quietly closed the circle that we started our night with. Looking back, and you can be the judge, but I have no doubt from the few experiments we did, she had a powerful effect on the forces within Hillview Manor. We'll be recruiting her again, and we'll push those experiments further so we can see exactly what happens when she does her thing.